Hello, Math Study students. Welcome to another online lesson. Last class, we talked uh, about discrete data and how we could arrange that. We talked specifically about column graphs. In today's lesson, we are going to be focusing on continuous data rather than discrete. And so we will be uh, arranging them in groups. Since continuous data doesn't just have whole numbers, it has entire ranges of numbers. And we'll use something called histograms to do that. And our goal is to be able to uh, interpret uh, organized group data using various methods. So to start with, a histogram is a vertical column graph, similar to the one we looked at in the last lesson, and it's used to represent continuous data. There are no gaps between the columns. We saw on the bar graphs there were gaps. There have to be gaps, at least for our class when we make a bar graph or column graph. But uh, for a histogram, again, it's a bar graph, but there are no gaps. The bar widths must be equal, meaning I can't have a skinny bar and then a fat bar representing different groups. And each bar height must represent the frequency. So height, that's our y-axis on our graph. And so our variable is on the x, and our frequency, or our count, our amount, our totals, are at the y-axis. We call each group a class. And so when I say the word class, I'm just talking about the group. And the size, or the range of that, is the class interval. And again, they should be equal length, which will determine the width of the bars of our histogram. few other vocab words that we need to keep in mind. Most of these are review. Uh, when we make a frequency table, uh, it may include any of these things. Relative frequency, we talked about that with probability. Relative frequency is your frequency uh, or the amount of that event divided by the total, so expressed as a fraction or a decimal equivalent. So you're dividing the thing that you're talking about, the actual data or frequency, and dividing it by the total. Cumulative frequency is a running total. Uh, if I wanted to talk about how many students I see through a day, I could count up all the students I see in my first class and then add on the students I see when I get to my second class and then add on my third class and so on and so forth so that by the time I'm done, I have a grand total of all the students I saw as opposed to just a list of different class sizes that I would then add up. So when we see cumulative, we should know that that means the word sum. It means add up, an accumulation. And the cumulative relative frequency is just taking the cumulative frequency and then, uh, again, making it relative. Relative means we're comparing it to something else. For example, the number 20 uh, might be big if we're talking about the age of a high school student. But if we're talking about someone um, at a job, you know, post high school, 20 might be a very young person. And so it's all relative. So when we talk about relative, we're comparing our frequencies to another number, and that's usually the total. All right, so let's take a look at some of these in action. I have a histogram, uh, or I, I'm going to create a histogram using uh, the start of this frequency table that's right below here, and we're going to add on columns for cumulative frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency. Um, and then I need to make a histogram. So I'm going to erase some of our directions so I have a little bit more room to work with here. Maybe we can at least get rid of the explore and oops, that should be about right. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is complete my, uh, my frequency table. Now again, we've got a class interval. And this is written, I would say it could be written better, but we see this a lot. You've got a class that starts at 100 and then there's this dash right here. And that's saying that it continues on. And it concludes all values until you get to the next one, which is 120. So we're going all the way from essentially 100 up to, but not including, 120, which is essentially a class interval of 20. And then we add 20 on next time and add 20 on. And again, we include it all the way until we get to 299.9999999, essentially 300. So again, our interval is 20 each time, starting with 100 and finishing right before 300. So in this class, uh, scores between 100 and 120, there were four of them. 
scores between 120 all the way up to 140. There were two of them, so on and so forth. If I want to figure out how many total things were involved in this study, I would have to add this up. I've got the 4 plus the 2, uh, which is 16, plus 10 gets me up to, I'm sorry, that gets me up to 16, and then 5 more, 21, 25, 29, 35, 40, 46, 50. So we are talking about a total uh, of 50 pieces of data here. Now it said that they wanted us to do a cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency. And there's no real abbreviations for this. So if you do abbreviate it in your notes, know that that's not official. And on a test, if they ask you to label this, I would label it by writing the entire words out. So cumulative frequency, I want to keep a running total. Well, to start with, if I look at my very first class here, from 100 up to 120, how many things did we have? And again, that is uh, four things, so four. Now, my next class, I had two more things. So if I take the four plus the two, that gets me up to a total of six things. Or if I were to total right here, four plus two gets me to six. Now I keep all those six and look at the next group. Well, now there's 10 more. So I take this six plus that 10 gets me up to 16 and then add five more on and I get up to 21 and add on four more and I get up to 25. You don't need to draw these arrows and I'll stop from this point, add four more on, I'm at 29, then 35 and then 40 and then 46. And you'll notice here for my last one, it should include all my data, all the data within this last group, which is 280 all the way up to 300 and then everything else that came before, which would be my grand total of 250, I'm sorry, of 50. Now it asks us to do our um, relative frequency, relative frequency, which is get our frequency just divided by the total, where our total is 50 every time. So we had 4 out of 50, we had 2 out of 50, we had 10 out of 50, 5 out of 50, and again, I'm just getting these numbers right here. I just did the 5 out of 50, and now I have 4 out of 50, and then I have another 4 out of 50. Where'd the 50 come from? That was my grand total. And then 5 out of 50, 6, and another 4. All right. Those are relative frequencies. We can use relative frequency also to add and search questions like what's the probability it would be in this first class here? Well, that would be four out of 50. Um, last but not least, we have our cumulative relative frequency. Cumulative, and I'm gonna run out of room, so I'm gonna say relative frequency. And, there's two ways to do this. You can just start adding up your relative frequency. So I start off, I had four out of 50, and then I can add the next group, which was two out of 50. So if I add these together, I'm up to six out of 50, and then add the next 10 on, and now I'm up to uh, 16 out of 50, so on and so forth. Or just, you'll notice here, my cumulative frequency, these numbers, four, six, and 16 are the same numerators I had here, four, six, and 16. So I can literally just take this next one, which is 21, throw that over 50, my total 25 over 50, so on and so forth, 29 over 50, 35 over 50, I'm sorry for my penmanship here, 40 over 50, 46 over 50, and squeeze in my last one, 50 over 50. If this was on a grid or a graph, it'd be a little bit easier to make sure all my uh, rows line up, but I think I did okay. Um, so we've done the first part. We've made a uh, frequency table that includes these additional vocab words on it as well. I'm gonna attempt now to make a histogram, which again is like a bar graph. I have an X and a Y axis, and um, I can do a little break here if I want and then start my graph off at 100 because I have no data before that and it's not going to affect my heights of my bars at all and uh, otherwise I would just have a bunch of empty space on my x-axis. So I'm going to start off here with, uh, well actually I didn't leave myself enough room for a label so let's see if I can nudge this even a little bit higher. And so we're going to start off with uh, again a little break here and then 100 goes up to 120 and then 140, 160, 
180. Okay, I'm going by 20s, 200. I'll need a little more room. And then I've got 220. Again, graph paper would make this a little bit easier. And then I'd make sure that all my widths are the same, but I'm trying to keep them pretty equal. 260, 280. I really should go all the way up to 300 here. All right, so there's my 300. Okay, um, now my y-axis is only measuring frequencies, and I notice it was this uh, third class that went up to 10, so I will go up to 10 as well. So 10, 8, 6. Uh, oh, I didn't need to do it quite like that. Let's try one more time. I often like to put my highest value on first so I don't run out of room, which was a mistake I made when I was doing my x-axis. So I've got two, four, six, eight. That's pretty well evenly spaced. Four, six, eight. Maybe my 10's just a little bit low here. Something maybe more along those lines. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to make my histogram. So the first thing we do is we figure out what's our frequency. So for our, and again, I'm just making the histogram for the frequency. There are, you know, histograms that you could do with the other data as well, and we might take a look at those later on, uh, depending on time. But to start with, we're just looking at our histogram using the frequency column. I'll use red here to make it a little different. And my first frequency was the 4 right here. And so from 100, I go up to 4. And I extend over and bring it back down. Because what I'm showing now is that from 1 to 120, um, there were four things within that group. And so I've indicated the class size or the class interval right here. Again, you don't need to draw that little arc that I drew at the bottom, but I'm showing that I'm going from 100 all the way to 120, and that's what my bar extends. Again, a common mistake is people will just center the bar around that, but that's not really showing that, again, our bar would go from 140 to 160 or whatever it was supposed to be doing at that time. So that's my first bar showing my frequency as well as my class interval. Next, what we're going to do is look at um, our second interval, which goes from 120 all the way up to 140. And there were two things there. So I just go up to two, and it, notice my bars are touching. And they should be equal with, my first one might be a little bit narrow, but that's uh, the idea. And then we've got the next one is our big one. It goes all the way to 10. So I go all the way up to 10 and bring it back down. Again, bars touching. And then I've got five. You can do a little cheating here if you have a bigger bar next to it and just bring it down. And then we have four. And then we have another four, so it should be the exact same height. And then I have a six. So I'm going to extend a little bit higher here, all the way up to six. should be higher than my five. And then I have another five. And then I have another six. And then finally, a four, which again, my height of four should still carry back to this four right here. With graph paper, it's a lot easier. And what I've created here is a histogram. So now I know that if I want to look at one class, for example, like say from 20, uh, 200 to 220, I know that that class size contains 20 different things, you know, from 20, 200 all the way to 220. I also know that based on the graph, there were um, there were four in there. I can see that if I follow this graph all the way over, it should be right at four. And again, without graph paper, there's always the possibility for mistake there, but pretty close. Uh, what else can I say? We were learned uh, the term modal last class, which is an adjective describing mode, which is the most frequent groups. So which class would be our modal class? That would be the class that goes from 140 to 160. A great way to write that would be writing the lowest value of the class, 140, the highest value of the class, 160. Our data is represented by x, and we could be equal to the 140. We cannot be equal to the 160, so I used less than and less than an equal signs to show that. And again, that would be like my modal class, the one that's the most often. There's no descriptor for the least often, but I can still see that as well. That would be my class that goes from 120 to 140, and I could write that with similar notation. Again, I just write down the smallest value, leave a little space, write down the highest value. Data is usually represented by x. We're always going to use some sort of less than sign. Our class started at 120. It was equal to that. 
and it can go up to but not include 140. Another way to show your class interval. All right. We will do a few examples like that, and then I have a few problems. Uh, next class, I'm sorry. And then I have a few problems for you to take a look at from the book on page 164 and 166. Things to remember from this lesson, make sure that your bars touch, make sure that they begin, uh, the bar begins right where the class interval begins and it continues all the way until the class interval ends, which should be the beginning of the next class interval. All right, uh, bring any questions and we'll see you next time.